Welcome back to uh, the series on building an image cropper. Uh, in this episode, we're gonna pick up where we left off and improve uh, how our image reacts if our user happens to drag it kind of outside of the bounds of our image container. So uh, let's take a look and see kind of where we left off last time. So uh, we had just built this image cropper component and we got this dragging working and uh, the zooming working here. So what we want to do now is basically if the user were to drag it like this and let go, you know, this is kind of uh, not what we want the image to end up like because this is not really a legal crop. And so basically just like on iOS, if you were to drag an image and let go, we want to snap it back to the corners and just help our users out a little bit. So let's start off pretty simple and just take the left hand side of our image and get it to snap back to the left hand side of the container again if we drag it too far this way. So our strategy here is going to be to look at the client bounding rectangle of uh, this image and this container. So if I were to just grab this image here and come to our console, you'll see we have this get bounding client rect method. And this is gonna be our friend here. We're gonna use this to basically see how many pixels our image is away from the top or the left of the screen. So over here in the code, we already have a ref to our image, but we need another ref uh, of this container here so we can compare those bounding boxes. So that's gonna be the first thing we do. We'll just get an image container ref and we'll slap it on this div right here, just like that. And now we can go ahead and implement our logic. And we're going to use this new hook called on drag end. This is another function that uh, React use gesture gives us. And uh, if we just log into the console here, we'll see as soon as we let go, we'll see that that hook is invoked. And that's exactly when we want to say, hey, you know, if we've dragged this image over too far, let's go ahead and snap it back to zero. So how might we do that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and drop some code in right here into our hook and uh, just walk you through it. So we're gonna start out with our existing value of crop, which again, just has our X, Y, and scale. And then using our image ref and our image container ref, we're gonna get those bounding client rectangle boxes that we saw earlier. And then we can use those to basically compare. So uh, it helps me to just kind of visually see this. You know, I went through a lot of different strategies trying to figure out the best way to do this math and it always helps to just get something concrete. So if I were to just grab this div right here and go ahead and check out the client rectangle, we'll see that left is 32. And that's just because it's 32 pixels from the left of the screen. So that's what that means. And then uh, the image starts out at 32, but if we were to drag it and take a look at it, then we're gonna see uh, its left value is now 84. So the left value is the distance in pixels from the left side of the screen to the left side of whatever element we have selected. So in our case, if the user ever drags this farther than the left side of the container, we know we need to snap it back, right? So uh, we just run that check right here. If the left property of those bounds is greater than the left property of the container's bounds, we should snap it back. But if it's less than, it's, it's okay, right? Because that's a, a, a legal crop. But if it's greater than, it should just be zero. So we go ahead and set that X property to zero, and then we call set crop. So let's go ahead and save this and come over here and uh, refresh. Then we can try this out. Let's grab our image and drag it. And we see it snaps back. So that's pretty cool. So again, I'll refresh. We can move it left just fine. There's no snapping, but if we move it past the edge of the container, the X value snaps back to zero. Now you'll notice if I were to pick this up again, kind of have an interesting behavior here. Uh, every time I let go, it does snap, but if I pick it up again, it kind of starts back uh, where I left it off. And that's obviously, you know, not what we want. So what's happening here is that we're using this offset property in our on drag callback to calculate the new X and Y when we're actually dragging the image. But offset represents kind of the cumulative amount of pixels we've ever dragged. And now that we're kind of bumping it back, we don't care about how much you dragged the last time. We want to start fresh every time. Well, fortunately, we can just uh, switch this to movement to do just that. So now if we come over and drag this, every time we pick it up, it starts off 
uh, at the left hand side. Now uh, let's go ahead and move it to the right and we'll notice some other interesting behavior. We kind of have a similar thing going on where we move it to the right, we have a crop value, and then I pick it up again and it starts over at zero, zero. So to fix this side, we just need one more option for our uh, dragging hook. So we can come down here to our options for our use gesture function and go ahead and drop drag. And then we'll just set the initial property to a function which returns where the drag should start from. So if you were to look kind of at the docs over here in uh, React Use Gesture, you'll see in the gesture options, we have this initial property. And this says every time a gesture starts, the movement state is set to zero, zero. But in some cases, you might want to calculate movement from an initial position that is external to your logic. So I just want to show you that so you kind of get familiar with these docs, but that's basically what's going on here. And uh, instead of this being zero, zero, you know, if we've dragged it over, we want to use the crop values for our initial parameters. So we can actually just drop crop.x and crop.y here, just like that. And with any luck, uh, now our image is actually always being picked up exactly where, uh, where it was left off. And that's, again, what you would expect. So this is pretty cool. And you can kind of start to see how this is going to work. Uh, if we go outside of our legal crop, we snap it back and um, the left hand side is working. So now let's let's do this right hand side. So I'm going to come back over here, right where we check the left hand side, and I'm just going to drop some new code. And this just says, uh, otherwise, we haven't gone over on the left. Now let's check if we've gone over on the right. And we'll just do kind of the same thing here where we check the right side of the image bounds and see if it's less than uh, the right side of the container. That is, we're checking to see if the distance from the left side of our screen to the right side of our image is smaller than this distance right here, because that way we know, you know, we've gone past uh, where we should. So if that's true, we now need to calculate the new value of x. So what does this mean? Well, let's go ahead and reset this and just take a look at our crop value so we can kind of understand them a little bit better. Um, as I move this to the left, we'll see crop X is going down. So it's a negative pixel value. I'll come down to our template and just math that round these so that's a little easier to see. But you can see here as I drag, uh, this is about 426 pixels. That's kind of the, the farthest left we should be able to drag our image. And then after that, uh, it should snap. So how do we calculate this kind of magic number of 426 pixels? Well, let's pop over to Excaladraw right here and uh, just draw some pictures to kind of help us understand. I use this a lot when I was working on this math and I just think it's a really nice tool. And, and again, for problems like this, it can just really help um, help your understanding to see kind of what's going on. So uh, let's draw the viewport right there and then we'll kind of make our image and we'll just make that fill of red. So, you know, we kind of have this image situation going on where we have this viewport, our image starts like this, and then the user's kind of dragging it like this. So you can maybe already see just from me doing that, if the X value is moving down, like we've dragged negative one pixel, negative two pixel, negative three, how far can we go until we want the user to stop? So we're basically looking for this distance right here. And we can just see from this picture, it should just be the width of the whole image minus the width of the container. And that's gonna give us basically how many pixels we're allowed to drag it. So uh, let's come back to our app and take a look at this code I pasted in. And you'll see that's exactly what it says. It takes the width of the image, again, the red box, subtracts off the width of the container, which is this. And then we just stick a negative sign in front of it. Since again, the crop is moving down just like that. So if we were to save this code, go ahead and give this a refresh. We can check that we still have our left side. And as we move this, it's okay, we can let go. And then uh, if we go over our right side, boom, there it goes. We calculated that 426 and it snaps right back to 
the right side. So that's pretty cool. Uh, just a little bit of math we need to do, but otherwise it's working great. And now we can go ahead and paste in basically exactly the same logic for uh, the top and bottom. We just compare these two, set it to Y, otherwise compare the bottom, and uh, set it to the differences in height with that negative sign. So if we save that and we try to move this around, uh, just like that, we get this really cool snapping behavior. And again, just helping the user out, making sure that they are going to give us a legal crop once they actually submit this thing. So we got a little bit more to do here. Uh, we're going to work on the zoom next and we'll see that it kind of affects a little bit of the math we just did, but the concept will be exactly the same. Now to start, uh, we just want to improve this experience a little bit. We see that we can zoom in like this, but if I zoom out, I can also just kind of keep going. And uh, that's kind of strange. And given that we start off the image filling the container, we shouldn't really ever go uh, below the initial zoom level. So we can come right over here to our options and paste in some more options for our pinch gesture. And we're just going to set the distance bounds to a minimum of zero, which just means that the pinch starts out at zero. You can't go below that. And that should take care of this. So uh, now we can still see that our dragging behavior works and I can still zoom in. But if I zoom out, it just kind of stops at one. So that's kind of helpful to our users. Again, if they want to zoom back out, that's it. It's just, it already feels so much better. So now for the final part, and this is going to be where we basically see how our logic behaves when we zoom in. So I'm just going to zoom in right now and I'm going to test out our logic for how the image behaves once we get over to the edge. So right here, you can see I'm pretty close to the edge. If I go over and let go, we kind of snap back here. This is like halfway to this bowl of yummy popcorn, but that's definitely not where we were. There's much more image over here. So we really should be right here when we let go, but we're not. And if I reload this, I can explain why. You'll see that our crop X and Y start out at zero. Now, when I zoom in, crop X and Y are still at zero because we haven't changed them. So this logic right here, which is supposed to set the left of our image to the left of the container by setting the crop value of X to zero is no longer true. We actually can go a little bit farther than zero. We can go all the way to, what is this, about 340. So that really should be what that value is right there. So again, let's pop over to Excaladraw and try to understand what's happening. Basically, if this is kind of how we start out, actually let's make uh, assume just for the sake of explanation that the image is basically the same size as our container. So in this case, uh, the left is zero. And uh, you know, let's say that this is something like 100 pixels, right? There's no overhang, so the user can't drag this at all. Now let's say that they kind of zoom in a little bit, right? And let's say it's now 200 pixels. Well, the question is, how far can they drag it this way? And how far can they drag it this way? And the answer turns out to basically just be uh, the extra 50 pixels on this side and the extra 50 pixels on that side. And that has to do with the fact that right now when we zoom, the origin is the center of the image. So uh, basically you just take the extra width that we have based on the zoom and divide it by two, and that will give us the extra overhang on either side. So in order to kind of calculate this uh, new derived number right here, we need the width of the image when it's zoomed in, and we need to compare that to the width of the original image. And uh, the difference divided by two is basically gonna give us that overhang. So uh, let me paste in some code right here. For the original width, we're still using the image ref, but now we're just getting the client width. And the client width is telling us the original width of the actual node, and it doesn't take into account the transform that we're doing with the zoom. So that's gonna give us the original width regardless of how much we pinched. And then we just calculate the overhang by saying, you know, let's take the width of the image, subtract the original width, and divide by two. So let's come back to our app. And now instead of X being zero when we've gone past it, like that, it should actually just be equal to whatever the width overhang is. And if we save that, look at that, crop X, 345. 
So that's zoomed. And if we were to refresh, we'll see that X goes back to zero. And so you can see that this, this width overhang is really just compensating for the fact that sometimes we're scaled in. But now we can go to the edge and we see it works just fine. Our Y is still messed up, but that's basically the idea. Now our right side is still messed up. If we come over here and go over, we kind of snap to this weird spot, but uh, that's just because we haven't accounted for the overhang. So let's just go ahead and add it back in to our new crop X. And now with any luck, we get that snapping behavior right back just as we expect. So that's the idea and we can do uh, exactly the same for the height. Just go ahead and get the original height, calculate the height overhang, and uh, this should be the height overhang, and this one will just compensate for the height overhang as well. And so now, uh, check this out, this is pretty cool. We can drag this around even when we're zoomed in, and we always get to the edge. And if we reload the app, we can see it all still works. So this is, uh, this is looking much better than what we started with. Now there's one more little tweak we want to make before we leave this video, and that is to adjust the image uh, one more time when we zoom out. So let's say that we've zoomed in and we're up here in the corner. Check out what happens when I pinch back out. Okay, so I've stopped pinching, but the image is just kind of over here, which is weird. We basically want to apply our adjustment logic when we finish with our pinch gesture as well. So all we need to do is come down here and add a little on pinch end hook. And this is gonna be a function as well, but this function is gonna do exactly the same thing that this one does. So we can just extract this to a new named function. We'll call it maybe adjust image, because it only does anything if any of those conditions are met. And then we'll use this uh, on pinch end, and we'll also use it on drag end. So now, if I were to zoom in and move around, look at that popcorn, it looks good. And then zoom out, as soon as I let go of that pinch, uh, we get that function running and uh, it, it works great. So now we're basically locked and loaded. Our user can basically do whatever they want with this image and we'll make sure to bring it right back for them. So uh, that was basically the math that we did. You know, I found these uh, bounding client rectangle functions, you know, really useful. I've used them before in the past. It's been a while, but uh, it's definitely good to know these. And you just do some math based on the DOM. But the nice thing about this is, you know, this is running uh, every time the gesture handlers call back and those hooks get run. So even if you adjust the browser window or, you know, the layouts change, it's going to be correct. Uh, so that's a nice thing about this approach. But um, that was the best way that I found to do this uh, to make it uh, pretty robust. And uh, we can see here that this is this is starting to look pretty nice. So uh, that's all for this episode. There's a lot more uh, we're going to do to make this even better. So I hope you stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this series. And I'll see you in the next one.